in an age of global strife and climate change, today we will try to explore the question, why is sex so damn good? Of course, a very important question, but before we get to that, let's look at a couple of solar-powered clocks. Here's the first solar-powered clock. As you know, sunflowers work by tracking the sun across the sky. This clock works with a dwarf sunflower. In the morning, you look at where the flower is facing, and then you make a mark at the bottom. At lunchtime, you look at the change position, you make another mark, and again in the evening. And there you have a solar-powered clock. Now, this might not tell you the exact time, but I think this clock is rather good, because um, I designed it when I was in university. Now, this is the second clock. It works with five magnifying glasses. Underneath each magnifying glass is a shot glass, and inside each shot glass is a different scented oil. In the morning, the sunlight will hit the first magnifying glass, and a beam of light will warm up the oil underneath it, and a specific scent will permeate through the house. A couple of hours later, the sun will hit the second magnifying glass, and a different smell will permeate through the house. So, during the course of the day, you'll have five different scents. After a couple of days, anyone living in the house will be able to tell the time just by the smell. Now, this clock was designed by Chris Hosmer. Chris Hosmer is a great friend of mine from university, but secretly, I hate him. <laughs> and you can see why. Now, I think my clock is quite good, but Chris Hosmer's clock is brilliant. And one thing you have to know about me is, I hate to lose. Now, when we first designed these clocks, I knew his clock was better than mine, but I couldn't explain why. This problem has been bugging me for over a decade. So, let's get back to the question of why sex is so great. A previous girlfriend of mine once proposed maybe sex is so good because of the five senses. And when she said this, I had an epiphany. So, in order to test this theory out, I developed something called the five senses graph. It's very simple. Along the y-axis, you have a scale from 0 to 10, and along the x-axis, you have the five senses. So, I'll show you how it works. One of the first experiences I ever recorded on the five senses graph was a simple one. It was just the act of eating instant noodles. So, I'll tell you how it rated for me. The first one is sight, the sight of instant noodles. Now, to explain this scale to you, a 10 on sight would be like the first time you see your newborn child. So for me, uh, the sight of instant noodles, not quite 10, will make it about 3. Okay, now touch. Of course, when you're eating instant noodles, there is touch, there is the uh, chewing sensation, and there is also the hot broth inside your mouth. It's about 3. Next, you have smell. 70% of the taste experience, I'll make that six. There is sound when you eat instant noodles. There's that unfortunate slurping sound, I'm sure you know. So that sound is about three. And finally, the taste of instant noodles for me, about a seven. So all you do is link them up, and that's the graph of the experience of eating instant noodles according to the five senses. Very simple. So. Over a period of three years, I gathered the results for many different experiences. And it wasn't just me. I had some of my friends involved and also uh, my students from when I used to teach in university. Unfortunately, I don't have time to share those experiences with you today. So I'll get straight to the point. What would the perfect experience look like on the five senses graph? Of course, it would be a horizontal line along the top of the graph. Now, in the three years that I gathered results, only one experience has even come close to being the perfect experience. It is, of course, great sex. So many of the respondents said great sex hits all of the five senses at an extreme level. In fact, one of my students summed it up the best when that student said, sex is so good, it's good even when it's bad. Now, at this point, you're all wondering, why am I doing this type of research? Well, my field is product design. So once I developed the five senses graph, I started using the five senses graph to rank different experiences I had when I used products. So 
While I was doing this, I remembered the solar-powered clocks from my youth, and I thought, hmm, I should put those right in there. Here's my clock according to this five senses graph. As you can see, I think it's rather pretty, so I put sight at eight. There's a little bit of touch, of course, for when you're inputting the data. However, the three other senses are at zero. Here's Chris's clock. Now, as you can see, I think Chris's clock is slightly less pretty than mine to save some dignity. However, the important part is, in his clock, smell is at nine. And that's what makes his clock so genius. Up till now, whenever we've told the time, we've used our eyes. Even my clock may use a sunflower, but it's still using your eyes. Chris's clock uses a whole new sense that has previously not been associated with telling time, and it's brilliant. That's what the five senses graph has told me about product design. Too many designers these days make things, design things to be pretty and perhaps a little bit of touch, but they ignore the other three senses. Chris's clock teaches us that if you can design something and use one of the ignored senses, it can be a brilliant product. The great sex graph teaches us if you can design a product that looks like that graph, you'll be richer than God. Now, the five senses graph has told me a whole bunch of other things. For example, why riding a Kawasaki Ninja through a tunnel at 2 a.m. is brilliant. Why the Nintendo Wii is better than any previous game console. And, of course, how pornography led to the adoption of the VCR. But I'll save those stories for another day. Until then, please remember, great design is about meeting the needs of the five senses. Now, before I leave, I do hope this is the experience you have watching all the TED Talks today. However, we could boost up a couple of the senses, and the best way to do that is with free candy. So here you go. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you.